going to take a look at the way in which radicals add to alkenes and alkynes. But first, what exactly is a radical, and how can we show their formation? A radical is any atom that has an odd number of valence electrons, and they are generated by a homolytic cleavage of a bond. Rather than showing an electron pair move together, the electrons in a bonding electron pair will move independently, as we could see in the case of this bromine molecule, to generate the two radical species we see here on the right. Before we show how radicals can add to alkenes and alkynes, let's go ahead and see how we could show this homolytic fragmentation in ACE. By using the one electron arrow, what I could do is I could highlight my bond and show two separate one electron arrows going to each bromine atom. And now after I click on the view my products in the ACE mechanism calculator, I could see that my two bromine radicals are generated. Notice that since radicals do not have a full octet of electrons, they are highly reactive and can quickly reform this sigma bond. I could show this in ACE by clicking on each bromine atom and using the parentheses with this dashed bond to show reformation of this bromine to bromine single bond. But notice, I have to show a one electron arrow coming from each bromine atom to have this bond reform. And once again, if I click on my view products in the ACE mechanism calculator, I can see that I regenerate my bromine to bromine single bond. Finally, if I would like to generate one single bromine radical, I could use my bromine atom tool, right click on this HBr molecule, go to radical, and finally monovalent. And I could see that I generated my bromine radical here. And comparing our homolytic addition to our heterolytic addition, we can remind ourselves that in our heterolytic mechanism, addition of our bromine atom occurs at the most substituted carbon, and this is due to the carbocation intermediate stability that is generated after our initial A sub B step. If we move on to the homolytic mechanism, however, we can see that addition occurs at the least substituted carbon, and to begin understanding this, we can turn to radical stability. Luckily for us, our radical stability follows the same trend that carbocation stability follows. And that is, the more substitute our radical, the more stable it will be. So our tertiary radical is the most stable radical, while our methyl radical is the least stable radical. The reason that our most substituted radical is the most stable also closely follows our reasoning behind carbocation stability. And that is due to the R group substituents filled to empty interactions with the p orbital on our radical. Only for the radical's case, we could see that our p orbital is half filled with one electron, whereas for our carbocations, our p orbitals were completely vacant. If radical stability follows the same trend as carbocation stability, why then do we see addition of our bromine atom to our least substituted carbon atom? In order to understand this, we must take a look at the mechanism for radical addition. And first and foremost, we will use peroxides such as tert butyl peroxide to begin our radical mechanism, and that is because the oxygen to oxygen bond is relatively weak and susceptible to thermal dissociation. Each radical mechanism we take a look at will involve three steps. Step one is initiation, step two is propagation, and step three is termination. Initiation involves homolytic cleavage of our peroxide to generate two oxygen radicals. And in a subsequent step, our oxygen radical will react with hydrobromic acid to produce the bromine radical we see here. Continuing on with our propagation step, in our observed pathway, we could see that the bromine radical reacts with the alkene double bond and adds to the least substituted carbon atom. The reason why this bromine adds to the least substituted carbon is due to radical stability. In the observed pathway, we could see that we generate a secondary radical, which is more stable than our primary radical that we would generate in our other possible pathway. Since the secondary radical is much more stable than the primary radical, we will only see addition of the bromine radical to our least substituted carbon atom occur. After this initial propagation step, our secondary radical, which is trying to achieve a full octet of electrons, will react with another molecule of hydrobromic acid to reproduce our bromine radical. Thus, our reaction can continue over and over again until we finally terminate our reaction. Termination can occur in a number of ways. Two bromine radicals can combine to form the bromine molecule we see on the right. A secondary carbon radical can combine with our bromine radical to form this dibromide compound. And last but not least, two secondary radicals can combine to form the structure we see here on the right. 